to give God the glory. The Bible declares, and to engage with thanksgiving and to his thoughts with praise, be thankful unto him and let his name. Tell us God. Let his name. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, help me sing. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above all nations. And his glory above all nations. The Lord is high above the heavens.
praise. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, Father. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to wake up just one more time this morning, Lord. Because you didn't have to do it. We're so glad that you did, Father. Lord, we just want to say thank you on today, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we say thank you on today, Hallelujah. Lord. We say thank you on today, Lord. Lord, yeah, thank you for just keeping yeah. us, Lord. Thank you for holding us, Lord. Thank you for oh, yeah. giving us the activities of our limbs and the strength in our bodies, Lord. Lord, we praise you on today, Lord. With so much going on in the world today, Lord, we praise you right now, Father. We praise you right now, Father, because you sit high and you look low, Lord. Lord, we praise you, Lord, for what you've been giving us to us, Lord. Lord, we praise you right now, Lord. But, Lord, right now we ask, though, Father. Right now, Lord, we ask you right now, Father, Lord. Lord, meet us right here at this place, Lord. Meet us right now, Father. Send your spirit right now, Jesus. Lord, we ask right now, send your spirit. Send your anointing right now, Father. Send that confidence right now, Father. Lord, we got so much going on in this world right now. But right now, in the name of Jesus, I said in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we cast out every demon right now. We cast it out right now, Lord. Lord, strip it from us right now. Strip it from us right now, Father. Strip it right now away from us, Father. Push this cup away right now, Lord. Push this cup away right now, Father. Because you know that you're able, Lord. Lord, you're able to do it. So we stand right now here, Father. Ask it right now, Lord. If there's anything in us right now, if there's anything in us right now that's not clean, Father, take it away right now. Take it away right now, Jesus. Take it away right now, Jesus. Take it away right now, Jesus. Because you can do it. Lord, you can do it. Lord, you can do it, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless our pastor. Bless our first lady right now, Father. Continue to give you the healing, Lord. Continue to give you the strength, Father. Continue to give you the mind to keep running on, Lord. Because there's a sick, dying world, Lord. But we need your message. We need your message right now. We need your message right now. Like never before right now, Father. We need your message, Lord. And Lord, I promise you, Lord, at the end of the day, we will give you all the praise. 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 We will give you all the glory. We will give you all the glory. We will give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. It is done. In Jesus' name. It is done. In Jesus' name. I said it is done. In Jesus' name. Saints. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. I'll be reading St. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 7. Yes, God. I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. And abide in me and I in you, as the branches cannot bear fruit of itself. Yes, God. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. You abide in me, and I in him, and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you cannot do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. As they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they burned. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Thank you for the blessing reading of this word. Amen. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. 
I am Lady Sheila Simpkins, and I am here to welcome you today. I thank God for each of you who have taken the time out to come into the service today. Hallelujah. I thank God for every Facebook person that's watching, every person that's on Zoom that's watching. However you are coming in, we thank God for you today. And please know that we here at Solid Rock are praying for you. Amen. And on behalf of my pastor, J.K. Simpkins, and of course, the Solid Rock family, we would like to give you a very special welcome today and also to let you know that God is in control. Amen. So we want you to sit back, hallelujah, and enjoy the service. We have a very special speaker coming to us today, and I am so thankful for God, and I'm waiting patiently for what the Lord has given to him. So again, be encouraged today. And know that God is in control. God bless you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.
what he's done for me. Hallelujah. He's done great things. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'll never forget, Hallelujah. amen. We count it a blessing, amen. Hallelujah. And to be in house of God, amen. Hallelujah yet again, amen. Looking forward to God doing great things, amen, for us even greater, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to, uh, we're going to do our offering, amen, at this time. And the scripture I want to read, amen, is coming from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, starting at the uh, fifth verse. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort my brothers that they would go before me unto you. Make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye have noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as a continence. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. And every man as he uh, purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or as necess 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 necessity. Necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. So we ask it, amen, on today, amen, as you make up your heart, amen, to give, amen. Remember, amen, that God blesses a cheerful giver. And God got great blessings in store for each and every one of us. If we only continue to trust in him, amen. I was hearing how God was speaking on this week, amen, how he said as we pray, when we pray, sometimes we, the Bible said, watch as well as pray. Amen. And so we've been doing a lot of praying, and God told me that all we need to do now is start watching. We need to watch God. Amen. Watch God move. Amen. Watch God reign. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to reign right now, y'all. Hey! God's been moved by his power. Amen. If I were you, I would get, my place, get myself in a position where I can receive the blessings from God. So when you give, amen, give, amen, bountiful blessings can come That God, that you would touch every heart, amen. Touch every giver right now in the name of Jesus. Bind the enemy, Lord, when he come in to torment their minds, God. Hallelujah, God. And show them you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, your manifested blessing, God. Restore to the giver and receive 100 full blessings, God. In the end, Lord, give them eternal life. And we'll be so careful to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Bless God. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. We honor the Lord for each one of you that are here today. Now listen, people of God, thank you for the announcement. Thank you, Elder Gordon. Amen to all of the saints of God that are in the sanctuary this morning. We praise God for you. Amen. Elder Smith, Elder Gordon, as I mentioned earlier, Elder Brown, who will be coming to us in just a moment with the word of the Lord. Amen. Let me just share with you as the announcements are being prepared and running across the screen, uh, there are many things that we have going on every week. And we praise God for those things because, uh, indeed, uh, we are working daily to stay, keep you connected with one another, but most importantly, to God. Amen. The Bible declares if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with another, and then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Those of you who are in the sanctuary, if you want to sow your seed, go towards the back of the building. Amen. And there, amen, you can do that there uh, on your way out. But let me share with you, uh, you'll see the general announcements that will go through on a, on a weekly basis, including prayer and fresh bread and amen. Tomorrow night is the men's cave. Tomorrow night is the men's cave. So the men will go in and they'll share. Glory to God tomorrow night. Thank God for uh, those that are running that uh, Deacon Green. Amen. Soon to be Minister Green. He has acknowledged his calling. Glory to God. And, uh, glory to God. And, as you can hear they are excited stop it Brother Romero. If you can hear, glory to God. <laughs> we are invited to the sanctuary. Amen. 
but we're going to move on. I was telling y'all that tomorrow night the men's cave is going to be on, and the men will be at 7 o'clock. They'll go in on the Zoom line, and they're going to be talking about mental health among the brothers. And, and we absolutely need to kind of acknowledge the fact that God needs to help us in our thinking process and work us through some things uh, that we've grown up, glory to God, with and many times have not acknowledged that they are affecting our lives. Uh, and you can never be delivered from anything you don't acknowledge exists. And so it's important for us to, amen, gather. We'll do that tomorrow night. I do want to share with you all, let me move down the road here and share with you that next coming Sunday, uh, our uh, other campus, amen, the campus in the valley, the Solid Rock Church Valley, amen, uh, will meet at 8 o'clock, and we will uh, have our two-location celebration. Two years we've been in the valley, amen, and the Lord has blessed us there. Uh, we have persevered, and God is growing the ministry and blessing individuals there, and so we look forward to you joining us. I've asked those of you at, uh, that mostly attend the headquarters campus here in Newark to come down at 8 o'clock and celebrate with your brothers and sisters there in Tracy, amen, next Sunday. The choir, we've asked to come and sing, and we appreciate that. It's going to be a wonderful time of celebration next Sunday. So I want to encourage all of you all to do that. Uh, the next Sunday coming up and be a part of what God is doing in the ministry. Please, I encourage you to look in the, uh, in the chats and, or uh, on the screen so that you can see the announcements that are going on in the Solid Rock page. Amen. There's a lot going on every day of the week at Solid Rock. We want to keep you connected. Amen. And so I praise God for each one of you that are here today. Amen. If you will, wherever you are, glory to God, would you give God a crazy praise? Just so. <laughs> Radical. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, God. Make some Glory noise. Glory to your name, God. Come on. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. To the Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't nobody do you like Jesus. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody do you like the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. Amen. Listen, I'm going to ask the choir to prepare yourselves. I know they uh, were only prepared to do two, but I'm going to ask them to come back and sing one more song for us. And uh, once they have gotten through with that song, uh, then the next voice you will hear would be that of our minister of the gospel for this day. Amen. We are going to have the elder uh, Paul Brown come. He is the evangelist president, evangelism president here at the Solid Rock Church. Amen. And he's going to come and break with us the bread of life. Is that all right? Amen. When he comes, I would that you would give God some praise. Amen. For the word that you will receive. Indeed, it will bless your heart. I am convinced of that. Amen. God bless you all, and thank you all for joining us today. Again, I did not acknowledge, but I sure want to acknowledge uh, the lady we call the jewel of the rock, the lady Sheila Ann Simpkins. Glory to God. If I were a temptation, I'd say, my girl, but I'm not. So anyway, let that go. Hallelujah. Amen.
names yet. God says he has a new name for me. He's got a new name for you too. When you give your life to Jesus, he'll give you a new name. And when you meet him, he's going to reveal that name to you. He knows your name. Oh, thank you, Pastor, First Lady. It's an honor and a privilege to stand here in the pulpit before you today. What an honor, first to God, but I also acknowledge my beautiful wife and Jordan and my son Nigel. Go ahead, wave your hands, son. Here today, God is good. God is good. Listen, I was. I had a message I was already prepared to, to preach, but last night God changed my message. He said, no, you're not preaching that today. You've got to preach what I tell you to preach. So right now, I want everyone to bow their heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, open up our ears to hear what thus the Spirit saith to the church. Lord, open my lips and fill them with your word. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We depend totally and 100% upon you. We can do nothing without you. And God, by your spirit and your word, Lord, transform us into your image to be just like you, O oh God. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Open your Bibles right now to the book of Acts. Turn with me to the book of Acts. Uh, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments. Everybody say commandments. Unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them, say commanded them, yes. that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. But John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The book of Acts was written by Luke, the physician and his companion of the Apostle Paul. Luke was the writer of the Gospel of Luke. And early in church history, the book of Acts, as we know it today, was often considered with the book of Luke as one book. It was put together and considered like Luke part one, Luke part two. And it, because Acts was written by Luke as a continuation of the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke. And so we see that in Acts, the primary message of the book of Acts is that the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus was pr that Jesus preached was continued and carried forth in the church's ministry. The book of Acts testifies, beginning in the first verse, that in all that Jesus began both to do and teach, Jesus commanded his followers to continue. Now, with his church, with his uh, death, resurrection, and ascension, securing the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus promises power to minister this gospel, saying, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Believers 
empowered by the Holy Ghost, became the continuing vehicle, literally the physical body, through which the gospel is shared with the world. In other words, what began as God's role in Christ now was being transmitted through his followers, his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And we find in Acts a consistent pattern in the proclamation of the gospel. All through it, first we find that we see Peter preaching the pattern of the gospel of the kingdom in the second chapter of Acts on the day of Pentecost. Then we see this same gospel pattern preached again by Peter after the first apostolic miracle of healing the lame man at the gate called Beautiful in the third chapter of Acts. About one-third of the entire book of Acts consists of speeches. And most of these speeches by Peter and Paul proclaiming the gospel uh, are of him proclaiming, presenting the gospel plan. And the pattern of the message is consistent, the same throughout. You'll find the same consistent pattern in message after message. In fact, once you recognize the message, the pattern of the gospel, you see the same pattern throughout all the entire Bible from Old Testament to New Testament. Now, Later, Paul took this same pattern of the gospel proclamation and he broke it down into its pieces in his letter to the church in Rome. See, the church in Rome already had the gospel of the kingdom. The Romans already knew the gospel of the kingdom. They had already been preached to them and they were teaching and preaching it themselves. They already knew what the gospel was and Paul writes the letter to the Romans in order to deepen their understanding by breaking it down into its pieces. The mistake that many people make in trying to learn what the gospel is from the book of Romans without first seeing what the gospel is from the book of Acts. Anybody ever try to put together a 1,000-piece puzzle? You know how it is. You, you, you fit a piece together, and it's, you put some pieces, and this one seems to fit here, and this fits there, but wait a minute, now this one doesn't fit here. What's going on? And you have to do what? You have to look at the box cover to see what it looks like so that you know, recognize the pattern. You see, when you're trying to put together the pieces, you, you get all twisted and messed up unless you already see what it looks like with all the pieces put together in the proper place. Imagine trying to put it together without first knowing what the pattern's supposed to look like. And this is the mistake some people make and they get it twisted down. Even theologians do this down through the history. You'll see one friend saying, well, the gospel is this and it should be like this and they get it messed up. All they have to do is look at the pattern that was preached in the book of Acts. And, and, and Peter speaks of this. Peter talks about that in 2 Peter 3, verses 14 and 16. Peter says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye found in him in peace, without spot or and blameless, and account that the suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures under their own destruction. Can I preach to you today? Can I talk a little bit? You see, oftentimes we try to complicate things and make it difficult and get it twisted, or we oversimplify it. Try to mess it up and it's not right. 
you've got to go to the pattern that God had laid forth on the day of Pentecost. Listen, and so when we look at this pattern, when you see how it broke down, we find that first of all, we see the pattern. The first thing that if you look at the second chapter of Acts, and we find that Peter was preaching, and you look starting beginning in about the 22nd verse, you can follow the pattern, but you'll also see the same pattern of the third chapter. You'll find it throughout the scriptures, but you find the first thing that he says is he presents Jesus as a real historical person, a man empowered to perform signs and wonders. You see that even the scribes, the Pharisees, you see, even the, those that were the enemies of Christ, they had to acknowledge these, these miracles are real. Even the Roman authorities, they recognize when you study history and you find it in the ancient Roman records, they recognize that Jesus was a miracle worker. Only God could do these things. They had recognized these things. Now the enemies would try to would try to say, well, he did it by the spirit of the devil. Don't you ever let anybody say that. Jesus said you can be forgiven of just about anything, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, you'll never be forgiven of don't ever attribute the devil to God's works. Come on now. Now the second thing is notice what he did. The, after then, the, uh, saying that Jesus was a real person, the second thing in the gospel message, he, he began to tell them, he says, now it was prophesied. And see, the Bible says that Jesus was, de was delivered unto man by the pre uh, determined and the, pre the counsel of God. God had already predetermined, foreordained, that he would send his son to die for our sins. And then they begin to break it down into the prophecies and show how that it was prophesied hundreds of years before he was born that he came to be a sacrifice to pay the penalty for our sins. Now, after it was shown that, that God came and that God came down and presented Jesus to be our sacrifice on the cross, but that's just a half of it. Notice the very next thing that Peter does. What Peter does now is after he shows that by this same one that was crucified, he says it was you that crucified him. Notice the pattern. It was you. You did it. You crucified him. Every time they preach, they said it was you, your wickedness that crucified Jesus. We see this pattern and we begin to understand that, see, the principle that, that Jesus laid forth in Matthew 25, verses 34 through 46, is that inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. Every time you let a curse word out of your mouth, that curse word is you're cursing Jesus. Every time you lied, Jesus says, you lied on me. Every time you committed a, a sin, you did it to Jesus. Every time you uh, hated on someone, wait a minute, hate is too strong of a word, I'm sorry. Every time you disliked someone, you were disliking Jesus. You were nailing the nails in his hand. You were beating him with the whip. You crucified him, the Bible says, by your wickedness and your sin. And he goes on and he shows, listen, I want you to th imagine yourself, you got into a fracas uh, with your neighbor. And your neighbor called the police and said that he assaulted me and hit me and beat me. And you said, well, he's lying. I never touched him. I didn't get near him. Oh, we had words, but, you know, I never touched him. He's lying because you're trying to get yourself out of trouble. You don't want to go to jail. And so he lied. He, you know, I never touched him. I don't know where he got those bruises for him. But he pressed charges, and a court date was set. And so on the day of the court, you're rushing, you're running late, and you're trying to get to the court. You got your defense already. You know what you're going to say. Oh, he just don't like me, you know. He said, now he's making a, uh, he's try, trying to get me in trouble because he's mad at me and don't like me and all this stuff. And all the way to the courthouse, you, you're running late and you're kind of nervous anyway and upset and this car just driving so slow in front of you. 
It's driving so slow and you're getting more and more impatient. Pretty soon you're getting irritated and mad. When you finally get a chance, why is he driving so slow? He ain't got to drive that slow. By the time you get a chance to go around him, you're mad. Your window rolled down and you let you, as you go by, you flip him off and uh, yell out a curse word. Run around them, and then you get to the courthouse. You drive and round and round trying to find a parking spot, and you round and round and round trying to find that spot. And you finally, just as you see a parking spot, that open up that one spot, open up, and oh, there it is a car that's behind you races around you and jumps in it just before you get there. Now you really bad, and then you bad insult to injury. It's that same car and driver that was driving so slow in front of you before. Now they want to stole your car. Now you are really heated. You mad, you pull over. Man, you so you stole my spot. You mad. And the man get out and say, I'm sorry, I got to be in the court. It's I don't, I gotta be there too. You ain't the only one. Uh, man, you you cussing him and tell me if I had time, I'd whoop your behind. Stick him out. You so mad, you just oh you just going off. But you have to get in you drive around, you finally find a spot, you rush up to the courthouse, get in line, check in, sit down in the courtroom, and you sitting there, you sitting there working on your defense. Okay, you know, you gotta, I know I'm a, I'm pleading innocent and and he just, you know, lying on me, talking about because he, he don't just because he mad at me and don't like me and you know, et cetera. And and, and then the and the bailiff says, "All rise," and the judge walks in, and the judge is the same one who you just got through cussing out in the car <laughs> and, and threatened to beat him up. Are you in trouble now? Oh, that's a problem, isn't it? That's the problem we have. That's the problem we have. That's the problem we have because the same one that we sinned against, that we put on a cross and crucified, he's the one that's going to be judged. No wonder, no wonder the people after Peter preached, no wonder they cried out, men and brethren, apostles, what shall we do? Oh, my goodness. I wonder what you're going to do now. What you're going to do? And Peter had one word for him. He said, repent. Repent. The word repent is a Greek word, metanoia. All it means is change your mind. I'm here to tell you, you've got to change your mind. Change your mind about ever letting any kind of sin come out of you. Change your mind about letting ever any curse word ever come out of your mind. It means a complete and a total change of mind. You have to change your mind about ever sinning again. And see, you've got to change your mind. And then he said it'd be baptized. Baptized, baptizo means immersion. You have to be immersed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul broke it down in Romans 12 and 1. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Listen, Jesus provided the blood sacrifice. He provided the sacrifice of death for your sins. Now you have to, in order to be born again, you have to present your body a living sacrifice. Hold it, hold it the first word is holy. That means see, the sacrifice could not be accepted accepted be without spot or blemish. It was not accepted. Your mind must be changed totally. I'm never going to take another drink. I'm never going to touch wine. I'm never going to touch one marijuana. I'm never going to look at porn. I'm never going to do look at anything in a right before God. I'm going to be holy. I'm going to be righteous because that's the only way for the body to be acceptable and holy which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind change your mind there may be someone today you know that you've been going to church you've been confessing with your mouth but you haven't totally changed your mind yet you haven't made up your mind to give up all sin. You're still trying to hold on to one thing. Young man said, what shall I be to be saved? Jesus said, one thing thou lackest. There may be someone here today. You, you, you love God, but you never made up your mind totally. 
to give up all sins. I'm here to tell you it's not a question of spiritual growth. It's a question of salvation. If you're still holding on to something, still haven't changed your mind on every single sin there is, you're still not saved. Matthew 27, 21, Jesus said, Many shall come to me on that day, confessing me, Lord, Lord, but I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You can't hold on to any sin. Without holiness, no one should see the Lord. Is there anyone today, maybe someone at home, I want you to drop down on your knees right now. He said, whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Begin to call on him right now. Tell him, Jesus, Jesus, I've sinned against you, Lord, and I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Come into my life right now. I surrender all. Lord, I, my mind is made up. I know I don't have the strength or the power to live holy. I don't know if I can do it, but God, you promised that you would fill me with your spirit and give me the power to live right. You would change me. I can't change myself, but you promised to do it for me. God will do it. All you have to do is present your body, a living sacrifice. He said, whosoever for Taketh not all that he hath, cannot be my disciple. I'm forsaking all right now. I give you my all, Lord Jesus, right now, God. Come into my life, come into my heart. Begin to tell him, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you right now, God. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me. Thank you, Lord, my mind is made up. I want to make heaven my home. I know I can't hold on to any kind of sin. I've got to live right. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, if you made that prayer, there's four things you need to do. Listen to God every day. Read your Bible. That's how you hear his word. Talk to God every day by prayer. Worship God. God said, they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So you need a church to be involved in church that teaches the truths of God's word. And you need to share God. Tell somebody what God has done for you in your life. Praise God. Praise God. And if you made that prayer, call Pastor Simpkins. Let him know that you surrendered your life or rededicated your life. Maybe some of you, you're ashamed to come forward. You don't want anybody to know that you haven't been living like you know. Scripture says that if we, after we come to the knowledge of truth, continue in sin, there remaineth no more sacrifice, but a certain fearful looking of judgment. We don't want that. He says, don't be ashamed. Because if we hide our sin, it will fester. See, evil likes to grow in the dark. With their heads bowed, everyone with their eyes closed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive me for every wrong. Lord, fill me, Lord. Reveal anything not like you in me. God, that I may grow into the knowledge and image of your Son. And I ask, oh God, that you feel with the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, precious Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Tell the Lord, thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sorry, I don't know the words of that song, glory to God, but listen, let me tell you, we heard a word today that challenges all of us. All of us have found ourselves sometimes, well, we weren't, we weren't hollering, we weren't cussing at the man who was driving slow, but we, we, we did go off on him, amen, in our mind, so... We ask God to forgive us, amen, and to help us as we grow forward. Thank you, Elder Brown. Would you all clap your hands for Elder Brown and for the word of the Lord that came forward. You know, that word comes to challenge us. It comes to realign us with what God wants us. And I, I don't care who you are. You've got a car. Glory to God. Every once in a while, you need to take those tires in and get them realigned, amen. 
because you start going at a certain speed and that thing starts wobbling on you. Y'all will know what I'm talking about, glory to God. And so I want to encourage you, get back in line with God's word. Thank you, Elder Brown, for the word of the Lord. And thank you to all of you who joined us today. I want to say that our world in 2020 has, has experienced some significant changes. Nobody expected that from the beginning of March that at the end of March, we'd be all sheltered in place. We'd be practicing a word we'd never heard before, or a phrase we'd never heard before, social distancing. All of this is new to us. We had some issues, amen, and, and whatever your political strike, we had some issues in our country politically. There have been some changes that have taken place. And whatever, whatever, whatever your political uh, persuasion, you've got to understand that God loves us all. And we've got to learn how to get along with everybody. It's hard to persuade somebody to follow you if you treat them bad. It's hard to get somebody to listen to what you have to say if you speak to them harshly or without concern or empathy. And so I speak to you today as saints of God. We're going to have some differences of opinion whether you uh, are Democrat or Republican or independent. We're going to have some differences of opinion. In fact, all Democrats don't believe in the same thing and all Republicans. And all Trumplicans don't believe in the same thing. But what I do tell you is that the Bible says, if my people, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And if you will turn, come on, look at somebody across the room from you and tell them if we will turn. The Bible says if you will turn from your wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins and heal your land. I need to tell you that we are so grateful that, you know, uh, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris, one of our own from Oakland, you know, we are, we're so grateful. But they're not the answer to anything anyway. We've got to pray that they will follow the will of the Lord as well. So if we pray, if we lift God up, and if we ask God to lead and guide them, then there can be some shift, some change, some healing. So I share this as the shepherd of this portion of God's pasture. We are not going to be beating folks up. We're not going to be gloating. If you voted for somebody who won, we're not going to gloat. We're going to encourage. And if you voted for somebody who did not win, we're not going to put the air out of their tires. We're going to pray for them. I want you to know that we have the power through the Holy Ghost. As the pastor, as the elder just got through speaking to us, through the Holy Ghost, we have power to effect change. But the change begins in us. Somebody prayed, Lord, bring about change. And the Lord said, I will, but I got to begin with you. So people of God, we're prepared to go and pray that you have a wonderful week in the Lord. Do everything you can to encourage another person to live for God. Operate with empathy. Care about somebody enough that you'll do something to help them. Don't walk by a man who's hungry and tell him, the Lord feeds you, the Lord feeds you. No, you provide a hamburger or a piece of bread. You help them. And just remember, when you help them, you are sowing seeds. And when you sow a seed, always know 
that the seed will come back as a harvest and the harvest is always greater than the seeds. God bless all of you today. Would you pray with me as we prepare to close? Those of you in the sanctuary stand. Out of respect for the Lord. I want to thank, to all, thank you to everyone who joined us. What a wonderful service we had today. Amen. A wonderful uh, time of worship and praise. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Father, we love you today. We bless and praise you. Thank you for your presence in the room and in God, those who heard this service all over the United States of America and indeed the world. Through technology, God, you've allowed us to minister, to encourage, to call somebody to hear this life-changing gospel. Now, God, go with them this week. Bless them and keep them safe. And God, call their minds and hearts back to the cross. And God, we thank you for everything you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God everywhere say it, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord.